Jillida, bonjour, bienvenue, hello, and welcome to the Pictou County Wellness Center for this afternoon's Maritime Major Female Hockey League preseason game between the visiting Cape Breton Lynx and the home team for today's game, which will be the Action Benefits Penguins. My name is Michael Petter, and thank you so much for tuning in wherever you are joining us from. Uh, now, I should point out very quickly that I just got the rosters, and I'm still in the process of getting them written onto my game sheet, so uh, I might be a little bit... Uh, a little bit um, off the mark for the uh, first little bit here. I'll try to get it together as much as I can, as quickly as I can. Uh, I can tell you the starting goalie for the Lynx, who are in the cream-colored jerseys, uh, is going to be Abby Jessam. And the starting goalie for the Penguins uh, didn't catch the number of who's getting the start. It's either going to be Cicely Hammond, Harnum, excuse me, or Caitlin Langell. As we get our first stop, it's just 14 seconds in as we are underway. And I'm trying to get a look. It is it is Cecily Harnum getting the start for the Penguins. And if I'm getting any of these names wrong, uh, I want to very quickly uh, let you know that um, you can reach me through uh, what used to be known as Twitter, at PetterPC underscore sports is the uh, handle there. P-E-T-T-E-R-P-C underscore sports. Uh, or you can also reach me through Facebook, facebook.com, and then look for Petter Sports and Streaming, and the and is an ampersand, uh, and you can uh, get me that way as well. So if I am getting names wrong, please do uh, send me corrections and let me know, and I already see that I'm missing a name. Uh, 19, there we go. 19 is Briand. As the Penguins have the puck, the Penguins are in red. Uh, they're wearing their red practice jerseys, the... Lynx are wearing the jerseys that this franchise used to use, which is the uh, back when they were the Chevy McIntyre or McIntyre Chevy Panthers or Chevy McIntyre Panthers or something along those lines. Uh, so they are wearing their old Panthers jerseys. Gallahue plays the puck down to uh, Almond. Sam Almond tries to get a shot away. That goes wide. Going after it in the corner is Eisner. There's Eisner. She gets tripped up, trying to get the pass through. She does get the pass, now gets it back. Comes back to the near side for Almond. Almond with the shot, the save made. And again, that is Abby Jessam, who is getting the start for the Panthers in goal. Panthers are the home team for this game. Or sorry, the Lynx. No, the Lynx are not the home team. The Lynx are the visiting team for this game. They are in their light jerseys. The Penguins in red are the home team for this game. As, again, I'm still trying to get rosters actually written in onto my sheet so that I'm not just trying to look at things off of my phone. So just bear with me as I, for every stoppage in play, try to get a couple more names written down so that as that puck hops over the stick of... Uh, Rosong, and I believe uh, that's uh, Nadelku, who tried to dump it in for the Penguins. Now it comes down. Rosong getting it behind her own net, and these uh, game sheets are handwritten, and then a picture of them is taken and sent to my phone, so that I've got them. So if I am misreading any names, again I am not meaning any ill will. Nadelku with the puck. She gets it ahead for uh, Perrin. Perrin has that hop over her stick. It'll go down the ice. Picked up by Chisholm Beaton for the Lynx. I'm probably going to end up calling them the Panthers once or twice through this game. I've already done so a couple of times. It'll probably happen again because they are wearing the Panthers jerseys, even though they are the Lynx. <coughs> Excuse me. As getting after the puck in the corner there, that's Kennedy for the Penguins coming in to help out as well. Tran. Tran goes to play it back to the line for Amaro. Amaro does hold it in at least momentarily. Now the Lynx are able to come out. Landry gets the puck in across the Penguin blue line, but it's turned over there. Played back out to center. Going after it is, I believe that's Bernard. Uh, looks like B R Y N A R D. And now the puck back down 
into the Lynx zone. Comes off the wall, Briand not able to, or maybe that's a, another Briand. As we get the first goal of the game, yeah, I think there's two Briands. And so, first goal of the game goes to the Pens at 3.45 of the first period. And it looks like it is Jenna Greenwood who gets the goal. We'll get confirmation of that coming up here in a moment. Hartnell with the assist, so it is Jenna Greenwood from Rachel Hartnell. Time the goal, three minutes, 45 seconds. And it puts the Penguins out in front, one nothing here in the early going. There's a shot down into the corner. Getting the puck is Telson. Telson sends it back down to the corner for Greenwood. Greenwood gets it out in front. It bounces over one stick. Telson couldn't do much with it there. Now it's going to be Lawand. that being Anna Lawand. So I think Paris Briand, Sophie Briand, Anna Lawand, and Hilary Lawand. So there's a couple of common surnames on the Lynx team. There's a shot, kick save made by Jessam. Puck still loose right there in the front. Couple of whacks at it there for Greenwood and finally Jessam able to cover it up and hang on for a face off. 444 gone here in period number one. As we continue to try to get a couple more names written onto our game sheet here so that we can almost know what we sound like we're talking, sound like we know what we're talking about. Okay, as we, and part of the reason why I have to keep sort of uh, muttering as, uh, as I'm doing this is because if I don't talk when the music is playing, when we go to post these games onto YouTube afterwards, YouTube hears the music and it goes, oh my gosh, they're using music. Uh, and they think we're trying to infringe on copyright or whatever. And so we will once again remind people that uh, if you do hear any music in the background, when we go to post this to YouTube later, YouTube, we are not trying to monetize off of any music that we are hearing. In fact, we're not even worried about monetizing off of these videos, period. And the primary focus of these videos is not the music. It is the fact that we're broadcasting a hockey game and the music just happens to be part of the ambient sound here within the building. If you ever go to a hockey game, the fact of the matter is there is music playing in between... Uh, in the breaks in play, so that's just what's going to happen. Here come the Penguins out to center. Greenwood with the puck. Or sorry, that's Almond, eight, not Greenwood, nine. When the uh, practice jerseys get tucked in a little bit there, it's sometimes hard to tell what's an eight, what's a nine, as there's a shot and a save made by Harnham. With 5.37 gone here in the first period. Okay, I don't need that notification. All right, uh, 12, Kennedy, Ava, 13, King, Abby. As coming out with the puck is Nadelku. And again, if I'm mispronouncing a name, please do send me a message to let me know the correct pronunciation as the puck rolls in onto Jessam. Lynn, as we continue to try and get this done here, Perrin, Christina, da, 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 da. there we go, play back underway, puck goes to the wall, be picked up there by Chisholm Beaton, Chisholm Beaton sends it behind the net for McClellan, McClellan, now coming back to help out as well is Hilary Lawand, uh, she's in the yellow uh, practice jersey that says Cape Breton Links on it with the number 61 taped onto the back. So she'll be a little bit easier to spot uh, as she's wearing a slightly different jersey than the rest of her team. And that's Hillary Lawand as opposed to Anna Lawand who has the puck now. Anna Lawand is in the cream-colored Panthers jersey. Hillary Lawand is in the yellow 
uh, number 61 jersey. Here's Anna Lawand working her way in, trying to get a shot away. It gets deflected, ends up bouncing to Kennedy for the Penguins. Kennedy fighting for the puck, not able to get it away from Landry. As we near seven minutes gone here in the first period. one nothing in favor of the Penguins. They're out shooting the Lynx to this point, 7-2. As the puck gets to the line and does come out, now it'll be dumped down the length of the ice. Coming out of the net to settle it is Jessam. And back to pick up is Gabriel. Gabriel plays it ahead for uh, Briand. That's Sophie Briand. Now back around to the far side. Sophie Briand has it taken away from her by Greenwood. Greenwood tries to get a centering pass. That gets deflected away. Stepping up to get to the puck is Nadelku. She'll send it down low for Hartnell. Hartnell plays it back to the line. Stepping across, getting the shot away there is Day, but that gets deflected up into the end boards. And now it's cleared out to center by Chloe Saunders. Brought right back in again by Day. Day stops. Now she'll back it up to the line. Cuts to the middle of the ice. Gets a shot away. Save made by Jessam. And she'll hang on for a faceoff with 7.03 left to go here in period number one. As I almost have the whole roster written down here. Still working away as quickly as I can here. That's the uh, challenge when you get uh, don't get the game sheet until while they're doing warm-up and you're trying to write things out as quickly as possible. Here with the puck is Eisner. She pushes it ahead. Eisner able to give it to Stevens. Stevens coming in, gets it over. There's a chance for Allman. She can't get the shot away. She finally does. And Jessam makes another save. And now the Link's able to get possession and they'll work it back out to center. With it now backing up, I believe that's Gallahue with the puck. Yes, it is, as I see now that it is the number four on the back. Gallahue throwing it towards the front of the net. That ends up going through. Everybody comes off the near wall. Cremo will get to it for the Lynx and work it out to center. Day knocks that down, plays it back around to the far side for Gallahue, who will dump it in and then head off for a change. Puck is in deep. Getting onto it there, Lefebvre. She tries to throw it to the front of the net. She does, and they score! I believe that's going to be Reese Vautour who's going to get credit for that goal. We'll get you confirmation of that in just a minute. But I do believe it's Reese Vautour who was able to score that one and make it a 2-0 lead in favor of the Penguins. The goal coming at 8.56. Of the first period, it's now 2-0. Okay, I missed the assist there. It sounded like he said assisted by 12 Kennedy. And we're going to get our first penalty of the game coming just... 18 seconds of playing time after the score was made 2-0. It's now, whoops, as Billy put the penalty up on the board as a two-second penalty, not a two-minute penalty. So it's going to take him a quick second to fix that up. There we go. Now he's got it. So the penalty against the Penguins, Fiona Day for roughing. And so the... Lynx will get the first power play of the afternoon. There's a shot kick save made by Harnham. As the Lynx continue to work the power play, Chisholm beaten, plays it down into the corner. Picked up there by Sophie Brion. She plays it back to the line for McClellan. Back down the wall to Brion. Brion sends it around to the near side. Going in after it there was Anna Lawand. She's also got Hillary Lawand in there helping her. Hillary comes out with it. She'll play it back to the line for Chisholm Beaton. Back to Hillary Lawand. Taking a look at her options. Now gives the puck to Chisholm Beaton. Chisholm Beaton will step the puck up the wall. Tried to play it down low. Had it knocked down by King. And the 
Penguins are able to clear the puck out to center ice. Hustling back to get it is McClellan. She's trying to get away from the forecheck of King. King knocks the puck off McClellan's stick. Now nearly creating, finishing the turnover was Telson. Telson does get the puck. She brings it back into the link zone with 50 seconds left in the penalty. Puck is turned back over to the links and Connors gets it ahead. Held in at the line. Now it's knocked down by McClellan. McClellan plays it around the boards to the near side. Landry will pick up there. Landry getting tied up along that wall. Now coming out with it is Chisholm Beaton. Chisholm Beaton taking it out from behind the net. Gets a pass ahead. It hops over the stick of Landry. Out of the net to play it is Harnham. And the puck gets to the line held in there by McNeil. McNeil plays it across to McDonald. Back to McNeil. Across to the far side for... I believe that was uh, Stevens. Or no, that was McNeil, excuse me. Brooklyn McNeil. And now we're going to get a stoppage for an offside against the Lynx. With 3.41 left to go here in the first period, the penalty has come to an end. Whoops. Put that on the wrong side of my sheet. There we go. 3.41 remaining here in the first period of play. Selects, or er, Panthers, Lynx. <laughs> Who's playing? Where am I? What am I doing? I don't know. Uh, there's Gallahue with the puck. She'll play it back to our Amaro. Amaro with the shot. That doesn't get all the way through. Second chance does get through, but Jessam... Covering the short side, makes the save. Now they battle in behind the net for the puck. 3.10 left to go. Four players in there battling. Puck ends up just about underneath Paul, but Paul able to get back up. Now the puck does come free. There's a chance for Allman, but she doesn't get much on the shot as her stick was disrupted. Now the puck does get brought out to center. Gallahue backing up with it, goes to play it off the boards for Greenwood. Greenwood will dump it down. Into the penguin or into the Lynx zone. Now back around to the far side. Cleared as far as the line, held in there. Sent back behind the net. Getting it there is Gabriel. Battle in the corner. Now it'll be sent around to the near side wall. Getting onto it there is Olivia McDonald. She'll play it ahead, trying to get it to Sa Saunders, but couldn't quite get that all the way through. Now behind the net, or below the goal line, Gabriel in there. Three other players in amongst the battle as well. And it'll come out for Almond. Almond plays it back to the point. There's a shot. That goes wide. Shot coming off the stick of Rosong. Link's able to get it across the center ice line. And then Ellsworth dumps it the rest of the way down. As we're down under two minutes left to go here in the first period. Pass. Just misses the intended target of Perrin. That'll allow McClellan to pick up for the Lynx. She'll play it around behind the net, trying to get it through for Paris Beyond, and that doesn't connect. Now it's intercepted, and here's Vautour to the front of the net, but not able to get a stick on it was Lefebvre. Now having trouble finding it in her feet there was, I believe that was Olivia McDonald, or was that Briand? No, that was 16, Paris Briand, yes. Now played around to the near side for McClellan. McClellan stops, turns, changes directions again. Ends up getting the puck stolen from her by Lefebvre. Lefebvre to the front of the net. There's Vautour with a shot. Save, rebound. And finding the rebound is Jessamine covering up and hanging on for a faceoff with 1.08 left to go in the first period. 2-0 in favor of the Penguins as they are out shooting the Lynx right now. 13-2 here in the opening frame. All five teams that are here today will be playing two games each throughout the course of the day. So five games in total. We've already had one game earlier today. The Northern Subway Selects with a victory over the Eastern Stars out of Eastern PEI. That game ended with a 3-1 scoreline in favor of the Selects. Coming up next after this game, we'll have the Capitals 
the Greenwood Capitals, who are going under a new name this year. Last year they were the Halifax Western Capitals. This year they're the Greenwood Capitals. They'll be taking on the Eastern Stars, who will be playing their second game of the day. That'll be the 12.30 game, or that'll be the 2 o'clock game, excuse me. Then at 3.30, we'll have the Lynx taking on the Northern Subway Selects, and then the final game will be the two metro area teams, the Action Benefits Penguins and the Greenwood Caps. First period about to come to an end as it's played around to the near side corner, and that will do it for period number one. Shots on goal are 13-2 in favor of the Penguins. And two goals out of those 13 shots in the first period for the Penguins. The goals coming off the sticks of Jenna Greenwood and Reese Vautour. And the, pan the Lynx with three different goalies dressed for this game. I think it's safe to say that each goalie is going to play one period. That was Abby Jessam's period. So she made 11 saves on 13 shots. And we'll see which goalie comes out to start period number two, whether it's Elsa Cameron or Brooke Wadden. As the format for today, three 15-minute periods instead of three 20s, as it will be for the regular season and the postseason as well. Part of that is just the fact that uh, with these being preseason games, it's more about getting a chance to evaluate the players in a game situation as opposed to just at camps and scrimmages and practices and whatnot. Chance to see what these players can do out there in real game situations while these teams are making their final roster decisions. So as we get ready for the start of the second period, it's going to be Cecily Harnum staying out there for the Penguins and still waiting to see who's going to come out. Still waiting to see what the Panthers are going to do for the start of this second period. And it looks like it's going to be Brooke Wadden out there as the goalie for period number two for the Lynx. So Brooke Wadden getting the second period. She's out there in a, looks like it's a Truro practice jersey. It's a practice jersey with a big T on the front. As the second period gets underway, Puck has played down into the link zone. Going back to get it, there is McNeil. McNeil trying to create some space for herself. Now she'll get the pass ahead for Paul. Paul not able to clear the zone. The puck ends up back on the stick of McNeil. She goes to play it across, but the only one there to receive the pass was Tran, and it was just out of her reach. Nearly a great chance for the Penguins there, but Tran not quite able to get onto that puck in time. Now Amaro deep in her own zone for the Penguins. Takes a hit there, and that's going to be a penalty against the Lynx as soon as they touch the puck. But first, here comes Tran coming in. Tran gets the shot away. That steered aside. And now as the Lynx touch the puck, we will get the penalty for boarding. And this coming just 52 seconds into the second period. And it's going to be Olivia McDonald going off for the board. So the Penguins get their first power play of the afternoon. And now, okay, yep, we're ready to go. Draw one by the Penguins. Gallahue with the puck. Plays it over to Day. Day stepping up with it, now feeds it down to Telson. Telson back to Gallahue. Gallahue with the shot, save made there by Wadden. Now the puck comes back to Gallahue again. Just 20 seconds gone in the penalty. Pass down. That gets broken up. And the Lynx are able to clear the puck down the ice. Landry 
will get to it first for the Lynx. And she'll just kill a few extra seconds tying up the puck along the wall. Penguins get a couple of players in there to try to work it free. They finally do. Good job there by Landry killing off some valuable power play time of the Penguins. Now the puck played out to center. That pass misses everybody. Sophie Brion going back to pick up, or Paris Brion, excuse me, going back to pick up. She plays it around the boards. It'll get knocked down by Telson. Telson now plays it back to the line for Nadelku. Nadelku back to Day. Across for Telson. Telson pokes it ahead. Greenwood picks up below the goal line, throws it towards the front of the net. That gets deflected, but it ends up right on the stick of Hartnell, who gets a shot away. And Wadden makes the save there and hangs on for a faceoff. 45 seconds left in the penalty. 2.07 gone here in period number two. As we get the faceoff. Neither side winning the faceoff particularly cleanly. Now Stevens in the corner, plays it back to the line. Pass across to the near side for Amaro. Amaro taking a look, now plays it back across. I believe that's Rosong, no it's uh, Nidelku. And now the puck cleared down the ice. 24 seconds left in the man advantage. Nidelku with the puck for the Penguins. Brings it in across the blue line. Tries to make a pass across. That goes off a skate. Ends up on the stick of Amaro. Amaro now trying to get herself free from the pressure of Sophie Briand. Puck is turned over and Briand able to clear it down the length of the ice. Just two seconds left in the penalty. That'll pretty much do it as the Lynx are back to full strength. Nidelku not able to get the puck under control. Eisner does pick it up. Now Eisner will play it up the boards to Nidelku. And that'll get out to center. Working her way in now is Lefebvre. She has it knocked off her stick. Lefebvre able to get it back, but could not connect with Perrin there. Now McClellan behind her own net, plays it around. And Saunders will get it out to center. Saunders chips it ahead to Paul. Paul not able to dump it down into the Penguin zone. Back to pick up is McNeil. McNeil tries to change direction, skated right into Lefebvre, but was able to get the pass across. Now it comes back to McNeil. This time she comes up the near side with the puck and is not able to clear it as it's held in by Perrin. Back with it again is McNeil. This time she goes far side. And the pass gets intercepted, but the momentum of Vautour takes her out to center ice. The Penguins regroup in center. Now that pass ends up missing its intended target as it goes right through Perrin, but not hard enough to be an icing. Lynx get possession in their own zone. Saunders plays it ahead, held in at the line there by Day. Now it comes out to center as we just pass four minutes gone here in the second period. Loose puck in center ice. Poked ahead by Kennedy. Going back to get it is McClellan. Kennedy ties her up. Now picking up is Cremo for the Lynx. Cremo saw that her angle was being taken away, stopped and changed directions, now gets the pass ahead. Or sorry, that's Cremo there who took that pass. It was Lawand, Anna Lawand, who had that puck previously. My apologies. Now it's played out down the length of the ice. This looks like it will be an icing call against the actions benefit Penguins. And so we'll get a stoppage with 4.44 gone here in period number two. With the Penguins leading it 2-0. Both goals coming back in the first period off the sticks of Jenna Greenwood and Reese Vautour. Off of the faceoff, Lynx get possession. Played back to the line for Gabriel. Gabriel plays it ahead, but that gets... Intercepted by Gallahue. She plays it around to the far side for Day. Back to the near point, near side corner for Gallahue. That cross ice pass knocked down. Now it ends up on the stick of Sophie Brion. She can't get a shot away. Gallahue able to get it back. She'll flip it up into the air and it'll come down. Gabriel picks up for the Lynx. Gabriel tried to play it off the wall. It goes off a skate instead and it's dumped deep into the Lynx zone by Telson. Back to pick up there is McDonald. Olivia McDonald looking to work her way ahead. McDonald gains the red line, dumps the puck in, puts it right through Rosong, and back to pick up is going to be Nadelku. Nadelku tries to make a pass. That goes off the stick of Sophie Bre or of uh, Hillary Lawand, rather. 
Now Nadelku with it again. Just over nine minutes left to go here, second period. And that's going to be another icing call against the Penguins. Actually, that's an R on the practice jersey, not a T. Of the goalie, Brooke Wadden, who's in for the second period for the Cape Breton Lynx. She's faced three shots so far in the first five minutes, 46 seconds of this second period. Nadelku with the puck, plays it ahead. Now here's Telson, getting it up to Greenwood. Over, and there's a shot and a goal by Rachel Hartnell. Picture perfect passing play, ending with Rachel Hartnell getting the goal. I believe we'll see Telson and Greenwood get the assists. We'll wait for the official word to be sure. But it is now 3-0 for the Penguins. Not much that Brooke Wadden could have done about that one as the very dangerous Rachel Hartnell gets a pass in a sniper's position and fires off a quick shot that's able to beat Wadden. So they list Greenwood as the only assist on that goal. I thought Telson got one as well, but it ends up being Hartnell from Greenwood. For Greenwood, that's her second point, as it is the second point for Hartnell. Either way, it is now a 3-0 scoreline in favor of the Penguins. But again, this is a preseason game. Wins and losses while they matter in one respect. In another respect, the points don't count in the standings. Wins and losses do matter in that, you know, teams are... Looking to see what fits, what doesn't, what works, what needs improvement. And so wins and losses can tell you that part, but the points, as far as the standings go, will not have an impact in that regard. Here with the puck now is Eisner. Over to Day, who fires a dangerous shot that ends up going wide. Day picked up her own rebound off the end boards but couldn't do much with it as she was tied up almost immediately. Now the puck comes around for Ellsworth. Ellsworth is met by Vautour and can't go anywhere with it. Now it's turned over to the Penguins. Out to the front of the net. And it goes just through Perrin as her stick was tied up. If Perrin had been able to get her stick on that, we might be looking at a 4-0 scoreline right now. Now Vautour hustling back, gets to the puck before Ellsworth can get her stick on it. Vautour ends up coughing it up behind her own net, though, to... Uh, Saunders, good work by Rosong to win the puck back, and now the Penguins will get it to the line, and out they come. Picking up there, Lefebvre had to make a move to try and get around Briand, that being Paris Briand, and in doing so, couldn't, uh, couldn't maintain control. Once again, if I'm getting any of these names wrong, please do message me at PetterPC underscore sports on X or Petter Sports and Streaming with the and being an ampersand on Facebook. Tran with the puck. Plays it ahead for Kennedy. Kennedy coming through center. Sends the puck off the wall. Race to get to it. There's Tran with a shot. Following up is uh, Kennedy. She ends up putting it just wide as she bumped into Wadden a little bit there. Now Kennedy with another chance and Wadden makes the save and hangs on with 6.24 left to go here in period number two with the Penguins leading the Lynx by a score of two to nothing. Of course, the ultimate goal for all of these teams is to be going to Newfoundland Labrador coming up in early April. The host team in Newfoundland Labrador for Atlantics this year, I don't know if it's been announced yet, but the Atlantic Championships will be in Newfoundland Labrador this year. And then 
The winner of Atlantics will go on to Vernon, British Columbia for this year's SO Cup. And for those new to the Maritime Major Female Hockey League, it's a nine-team league, three teams based out of New Brunswick, four teams based out of Nova Scotia, two teams based out of Prince Edward Island. As stepping up there, Gallagher with a shot. Don't know if that went off of the goalie or if that went off of McNeil, but either way, it went off someone and then ended up wide. So nine teams in the league covering the three Maritime provinces. The regular season determines the league champion. The league champion is the team with the best record in the regular season. Once the regular season comes to an end, the, the three provinces split into their own groups for provincial championships. The four teams out of Nova Scotia, one plays four, two plays three in a semifinal. And then the winners of each of those series advance to the provincial championship series. For New Brunswick, they've used a couple of different formats over the years. They've used a three-team round-robin tournament with the uh, top two teams in the tournament advancing to the championship game. They've also used just a straight from the regular season standings. Two plays three, winner goes on to play one. And for Prince Edward Island, there are the two teams. At the end of the regular season, they play a best of seven series to determine the provincial champion. The three provincial champions join the champions of Newfoundland Labrador, as well as the host team, which again, this year will be another Newfoundland Labrador team to make the five teams in the Atlantics. The winner of Atlantics goes on to represent the region in the SO Cup. 4.13 to go here in the second period with the, sele with the uh, Penguins. Out in front of the Lynx, three to nothing. Shots on goal right now, 22 to two. As the Penguins with a nine nothing shot lead in this period for that 22 to two shot margin overall. And here they come pressuring again. Eisner steps in, gets a shot away, save made, rebound, Eisner gets it, she scores! The rebound came to Georgia Stevens. Stevens was able to kick it over back to Eisner. And Eisner able to finish off the play as Wadden had no chance by the time that puck bounced around as much as it did. And so the action ben actions benefit Penguins now lead 4-0. And... You can't help but feel for Wadden there. She did everything, everything she could. She made the initial save. She laid herself out as much as possible. But the kick pass ended up right on the stick of Eisner. They also give an assist to Sarah Allman there. So the goal ends up being Ellie Eisner from Georgia Stevens and Sarah Almond. Time of the goal is 11 minutes, one second of the second period to make it the 4-0 scoreline. Backing up with the puck, Gallahue, she'll play it across the near side for Rosong. Rosong sends it back across the far side. It hops over a couple of sticks. Now it'll be picked up by Chisholm Beaton, who steps up. Chisholm Beaton taking it all the way down towards the corner. Still on the puck. Now tries to center it. That's broken up. And Vautour gets it, plays it ahead. Nice play there by Paul to keep the puck in the zone. Now Gallahue taking it back behind her own net. Feeds it up to Lefebvre. Lefebvre trying to clear the zone. That puck is knocked into the air. It does end up coming out to center. McNeil back on it. She'll dump it into the zone. Played right back out as the Penguins get possession. There's a pass up for Kennedy. Kennedy steps in, gets a shot away, but good hustle on the back check there by McClellan to break up that shot. And now the puck comes out to center. Sent back into the link zone. McNeil plays it across for McClellan. Out to center. Race to get onto the puck. First one there is Saunders. She sends it towards the net, and it rolls slowly in. On to Cecily Harnum, and Harnum covers up and hangs on with 2.08 remaining here in period number two. 
So it looks like Harnum's going to play this whole game, and then Langell will play the other game for the Penguins later today, I presume. It's one of the... There's a sharp angle shot, and Harnum makes a nice save there. Rebound was loose at the front of the net, but it ends up getting cleared away. Now stepping up is Gabriel, getting it all the way down to Cremo. Cremo behind the net. She lost control of it. It's played as far as the line, held in by McDonald. McDonald's shot ends up hitting a body. Now Anna Lawan turns and fires. That goes wide. Puck is loose at the side of the net. It ends up... The referee lost sight of it, and uh, so she blew it down. Didn't realize that the puck was still free. With 1.43 left to go here in the second period. 4-0 the score in favor of the Action Benefits Penguins, or Actions Benefit Penguins. I apologize to Actions Benefit, the sponsor, primary sponsor of the Penguins this year. Here comes Hartnell coming in. Hartnell tried to get a pass through to Greenwood as those two have combined for two goals already this afternoon. Nice play there by Gallahue to break up that rush for Ellsworth. Gallahue now gets it back ahead to Greenwood. Greenwood sends it around behind the net. McDonald will pick up there for the Lynx. McDonald trying to create some space. She'll play the puck ahead. It comes out to center. Amaro sends it right back in. Now Gabriel gets it out to Ellsworth. Ellsworth dumps it down into the Penguin zone. Going back to get it is Telson. Under a minute left to go here. Third, second period, excuse me. Poked ahead by Amaro, and out come the Penguins. Getting on the puck there, Almond. Almond gets through, gets a shot away, save made. And Wadden able to cover up and hang on for another faceoff. 42.2 seconds left to go here in the second period. At the end of this period, we will have a flood. So we'll take the break during that intermission. Then we'll have another 15-minute period after the flood. And then we'll be getting ready for our next game. There's a shot taken by Nadelku as that goes into the end glass. Now played back to the line again. Nadelku tries to go D to D with it for Rosong, but that pass ends up coming outside the blue line. So the Penguins have to touch back up. Delayed offside still as not everybody touched up at the same time. Now they do. But coming out with the puck, Chisholm beaten. And she's met by the pressure of the Penguins. Under 10 seconds left. Pass back to the line. Now it's picked up by Stevens. Stevens... Just sends it behind the net. That'll pretty much run us out of time as the horn sounds. Shots on goal in the second period, 12 to two. The two period total, 25 to four in favor of the Penguins. And along with the 25 to four shot margin, it is a four nothing lead for the Action Benefits Penguins, or Actions Benefit Penguins, excuse me, over the Cape Breton Lynx through the opening 30 minutes of play. We're going to take a break. We'll come back, get you ready for the third period in just a few minutes. You are watching Maritime Major Female Hockey League preseason action here on Petter Sports and Stream through Atlantic Hockey Online, a part of AO Live.
Welcome back as we get ready for the start of the third period here. Game number two out of five on the day here for the Maritime Major Female Hockey League. As some preseason action as the teams get themselves ready for the regular season. This game, a 4-0 lead for the Penguins over the Cape Breton Lynx. If you're just tuning in, the Lynx are wearing the Panthers jerseys that that franchise used to be known as the uh, Cape Breton Mac uh, McIntyre Chevy Panthers, I believe was the full name. And when uh, there was an ownership change, the team became the Cape Breton Lynx. And there's a shot right off the post. Dangerous chance for Vautour. But it goes off the outside of the post, and so it remains a 4-0 lead. The uh, Panthers, as they've been doing all game, a uh, different goalie here for the third period. It's Elsa Cameron getting the third period for the Panthers. There you see Elsa Cameron in the middle of your screen as she nearly ended up giving up the first uh, goal of the period as Vautour with the dangerous chance ended up putting it just off the post just a few seconds into this third period. Panther, or uh, Link, or <laughs> who's playing? Penguins <laughs> won the draw, but ended up losing control of the puck. Now out at center ice with it, Anna Lawan. She ends up coughing it up to Lefebvre. Lefebvre with the backhander. That will go wide, come off the end boards. Picked up there by McDonald. She plays it around to the near side for Landry. Landry getting tied up there by Kennedy. Kennedy gets it for the Penguins, plays it back to the line for Nadelku. Nadelku goes across with it intended for Day. That gets deflected, ends up down in the corner. McNeil for the Lynx, able to get it up to Anna Lawand. Lawand not able to clear the zone, however. Now it's back on the stick of McNeil. She plays it across for the near side. Paris Briand will get it out to center and down the ice. Back to pick up is King. King plays it ahead for trying to get the number there. There we see it is Tran. Tran drops it off. Now played across to the near side for Nadelku. Nadelku sends it towards the net, trying to get a stick on it was Hartnell. Also there was Tran, but it ended up going through both of them and then comes out to center. Greenwood, or sorry, that's uh, Gabriel getting it down into the Penguin zone. Now picking up, that is Rossong. Following up, here comes Amaro with the puck. But we're going to get an offside as Almond in just a step early. So with 2.09 gone here in the third period, we'll get a stoppage in play and the faceoff out of neutral ice. Quick look at the rest of today's schedule. The 2 o'clock game is going to be... Our fifth team to take a look at, the Greenwood Capitals. They'll be taking on the Eastern Stars out of Prince Edward Island. The Stars played in the game earlier today against the Northern Subway Selects. Selects ending up winning that one 3-1. to one. That, again, is the 2 o'clock game, the Capitals and the Stars. Then at 3.30, the host team for today's event, the Northern Subway Selects, will be back on the ice against these Cape Breton Lynx. And then our final game of the day will be these Actions Benefit Penguins taking on the Greenwood Capitals. That's scheduled for a 5 o'clock start. So we should be wrapping up around 6.30 or so. And we want to thank everybody who's tuning in wherever you're joining us from here on Petter Sports and Streaming through Atlantic Hockey Online on AO Live. We do appreciate it. And, of course, Petter Sports and Streaming will be the official home broadcaster of all Northern Subway Selects games throughout the course of this season. Quite proud to be back with the Selects for yet another year. The defending league and provincial and Atlantic champion Northern Subway Selects. Here comes Stevens working her way up the ice. She makes the pass over to Connors, but as the puck was disrupted, it ends up resulting in an offside against the Lynx with 3-11 gone here in the period. 
Petter Sports and Streaming, not only this, the broadcaster for the Selects, we're also going to be your official home of Weeks Majors U18 Hockey. We're going to be the official home of Wherewell Bombers U15 Hockey, the official home of the U16 Fundy Thunder. And possibly one more team. We're still waiting for the official word on that. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to say something for sure in the next couple of days. There's a chance for Stevens. But another nice save made there by Elsa Cameron as she gets her turn between the pipes for this third period. Face-off will be inside the link zone with 3.33 gone. The draw one right back towards Cameron. She steers that puck aside. Now it comes around to the near boards. Hillary Lewand after it there for the Lynx. She'll get it ahead to Paul. Here comes Paul getting a step. Paul stops, then tries to get going again. Ends up getting hit in the side of the head with the stick of Day. Day maybe getting away with one a little bit there. Now the puck dumped in by Stevens. It goes around the boards. Brooklyn McNeil getting to it there. She gives it to Lewand, Hillary Lewand that is. Now here's Vautour with the puck for the Penguins. She tried to play it back to Perrin. That was disrupted, but Perrin able to win the battle. Now she sends it behind the net. McNeil gets to it first for the Lynx. She'll play it ahead to Sophie Briand. Now ahead. And McNeil looking to clear the zone. She does and gets it down deep into the Penguin end. Just over three and a half, or four and a half minutes, excuse me, gone here in period number three. Picked up by Nadelku. Nadelku will carry it ahead. Plays it off the wall. Going after it now is Lefebvre. Lefebvre coming in. Lefebvre with a shot. And that goes up into the glass. Comes all the way around the boards and out to center. Back to pick up. There was Vautour. Now pass ahead. A little too hot to handle for Lefebvre. Race to get to the puck. And it ends up going down low, picked up there by Connors for the Lynx. Battle just inside the blue line. Puck is out and then sent back in again. Back to get it, McClellan. She'll play it around to the far side to Gabriel. Gabriel gets it ahead out to center. Knocked down there quickly by King. King gives to Amaro. Amaro gets it back across. Now pass ahead intended for Kennedy, but that's deflected away. Goes all the way down the ice. And McClellan back to pick up. She overskates it. That allows Kennedy to try to make a centering pass, but McClellan recovered enough to get her stick in the way of that one. Now here's Sophie Brion. She'll get it ahead intended for Saunders, but it's deflected away from her. And picking up out in neutral ice is Gallahue. Her pass ahead just misses King. And that's going to be an icing call against the Penguins with exactly six minutes gone here in the third period. Again, for those not familiar with the Maritime Major Female Hockey League, if you missed it earlier, we went through sort of the format. It's a nine-team league. Everybody plays 24 games, so you play each of your eight opponents three times each. And it alternates from year to year who you get your extra home games against. So if you had two home games against a team one year, you'll have one home game against that team the following year and play them twice on the road. And it'll flip back and forth like that as long as we, it remains a nine-team circuit. There's a pass intercepted, and a shot ends up getting blocked there. Good chance for... Uh, that was... Um, Olivia McDonald. Now the puck ends up hitting the skate of the lines person and King had to adjust. Ends up getting the puck down into the corner. Going in to get after it there is Greenwood. She's got two points in this game already. Greenwood trying to get it out front for Hartnell. That gets broken up. Now Hartnell behind the net ends up getting it, but she gets taken off the puck with a nice check by, I believe that was uh, McDonald. Now with it is Cremo. She'll send it down into the Penguin zone, picked up behind the net there by Day. Day gives to Hartnell. Hartnell goes cross ice with it for Greenwood. Greenwood will just send the puck off the end boards. It bounces towards the net, cleared away from there by Cameron. 
Now Hillary Lewand, she loses the puck. And over to the far wall, Almond gets to it there. She has it knocked off her stick. It'll be picked up by Stevens. And out come the Lynx back to center as we near the midway point of this third period. Seven and a half minutes left to go here in the third as we're playing three 15-minute periods for each of these games today. A reminder, when we get to the regular season, we'll go back to the regular 320s as the format for this league. Here's Hillary Lawand with the puck. We're just playing 315s today for preseason purposes to get all these games in and save a little bit on the ice time. Here's Amaro with the puck. One of the real realities of preseason hockey. Sometimes you and one of the realities of hockey, sometimes you have to look at budgeting, and so one of the concerns you have to take into account is the cost of ice. So Trying to save a little bit there by playing these preseason games a little bit shorter. There with the puck is Perrin. Perrin coming in, takes the shot. That goes into the end glass as the puck went high and might have been going wide short side as well, but it definitely was high. Out to center and then Lefebvre dumps it back in. Back to get it is McNeil. Lefebvre in there creating the turnover. Now it's to the front of the net, but cleared away by Connors. Nice play by Connors to get rid of what was looking like a dangerous chance once again for the Penguins. 6.09 in counting left to go here, third period. Puck comes out to center, played back in again by Gabriel. Gallahue with it. She'll play it ahead. That pass just a little bit too far for Perrin. Perrin able to pick it up off the wall, though, and push it down deep. Gabriel back to get it for the Lynx. Gabriel comes out from behind her own net, then plays it off the end boards. McClellan there to get it. She'll play it around to the far side for Ellsworth. Ellsworth had nowhere to go, so she plays it back to Gabriel. Gabriel back behind the net. Being pressured by Vautour. Gabriel pushes the puck ahead. That gets intercepted, but it ends up back on the stick of Gabriel. Now she loses it again to King. King tried to make a pass. That goes off the leg of Saunders and ends up out in neutral ice. Brought right back in again by Amaro. Amaro trying to cut through to get a shot away, but Gabriel ties up her stick. Now Tran plays it back, gets a return pass quickly. Now plays it back again to Amaro. Amaro comes near side with it for Day. Day steps in, gets a shot away, save made. And the rebound will be cleared away from the front of the net by... Uh, that was Paul who cleared that from the front of the net. Now the puck sent down the ice. That's going to get through Tran and end up going all the way down for an icing call with 4.53 remaining here in the third period. Shots on goal in this period, just 3-0 so far for the Penguins. So a much better period defensively for the Lynx as after having given up 13 shots in the first and 12 in the second, they've only given up three shots so far here in the third. But they have yet to get a shot on goal themselves here in this third period. Amaro plays the puck around to the near side. Four players battle for it in the near side corner. Fifth player comes in there as well as you've got Kennedy as well as Greenwood in there for the Penguins. Now finally coming out with the puck. That was Anna Lawand, but she couldn't maintain it as it ends up coming out to center. Now it'll be dumped back in. Amaro brings it right back out to center again and sends it down the length of the ice. No icing as back to get it will be Olivia McDonald. McDonald loses her footing. That allows Greenwood to get it. She comes out to the front of the net, takes a shot, second chance, and covering up is Elsa Cameron as the Penguins with more dangerous opportunities here. Penguins trying to make a bit of a statement that they are going to be one of the teams to beat here in the Maritime Major Female Hockey League this season as they are showing that they will be a dangerous opponent for just about everybody that they face. And obviously today we are going to see five of the nine teams of the Maritime Major Female Hockey League so we'll be able to have a bit of an idea on how the four Nova Scotia teams and Eastern Prince Edward Island will look. Of course, the three New Brunswick-based teams and the Western PEI team still 
waiting, or we'll have to wait for the regular season to, for us at least, as there's a shot and a goal. Claire Telson with the shot. Getting a piece of it was Cameron, but not enough. As it goes off of her shoulder and then up and in, and it's now 5-0 for the Penguins. As, oh, I see a message. We've moved to a 32 game schedule this year. At least uh, she, be Angie Glenn, thank you for that. Um, Greenwood and Hartnell both get their third points of the game as they both assist on the goal by Claire Telson. So again, that's Claire Telson from Jenna Greenwood and Rachel Hartnell at 11.23 of the third period to make it 5-0. And the message I got from Angie Glenn says, I believe we moved to a 32-game schedule this year. Don't quote me on that, though. Sorry, Angie. Um, well, I am quoting you in that you're saying you're not 100% sure. So if that is the case, then it'll be four games against each of the other eight opponents, obviously, two at home and two on the road, as we're going to get a hooking penalty here. And one, and I will look into that and see if I can find out for sure one way or the other, as we're going to get our third penalty of the game overall. It'll be the second one against the Lynx. Both teams 0 for 1 on the man advantage so far here in this game. This penalty coming with 2.52 left to go in the third period. And it's going to be a hooking call against Brianna McClellan. So that'll be the second power play of the afternoon for the Penguins. About, uh, what is it? 52 seconds the differential between the power play clock and the game clock. So there will be a little less than a minute left in regulation when the penalty ends. If the Penguins do not score. Here's Gallahue with the puck now. She gets it back over to Amaro. Amaro plays it down towards the corner. That gets tied up there. And now Lefebvre will come out. Ends up playing it back to Gallahue at the line. Across to Amaro. Amaro tried to get it back to Lefebvre. It goes, gets deflected down into the corner. Going in after it there is Perrin. Perrin will come away with it after the battle with McDonald. Perrin plays it off the wall, back to the line for Amaro. Molly Amaro down to the corner for Lefebvre. Lefebvre tries to get it towards the net, but it's knocked away by McDonald. And McDonald will get it just past Amaro and out to center. 53 seconds left in the penalty. Here's Gallahue with the puck. She'll bring it back up across the center ice line. Had it knocked off her stick, had to chase it back down. Now she'll bring it in, come all the way to the face-off circle, drop back. There's a shot taken by Greenwood, and that comes into the, goes into the end boards. Tran now will play it back to the line for Rosong. Back to Vautour. Vautour with a shot into the crowd, and able to find it is Cameron, and she'll hang on for a face-off with 29 seconds left in the penalty and 121 left to go here in the third period. So let me see if I can find that. Uh, let's see here. MMFHL. Let's see here. Schedule. Do, 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 do. As I was busy looking up something, and the Penguins end up scoring a power play goal while I'm doing that. And the time of this goal, 1 minute and 12 seconds remaining. So 13.48, the time of the power play goal. As their power play is now 1 for 2. And I believe it was Tran who scored that based on the way they headed. Okay, let's see. Regular season. Here we go. Let's see if we go by team. 1, 2, 3. What's our exhibition? Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. We're into the final minute. And Angie Glenn, I can confirm 
I can now quote you on this. Yes, we have moved to a 32-game schedule this year. So it is four games against each of the eight other opponents in the league. Now we're going to get another penalty. This one's going to be a roughing call against the Penguins, it looks like. Abby King is going to go off with 38 seconds left. So the second power play of the game for the Cape Breton Lynx. And I apologize, I didn't catch the uh, assists on that sixth goal for the Penguins. The goal was definitely scored by Julianne Tran, though. As the puck cleared down the ice by Telson. So the Penguins will come away with the victory here. The only question, do they give up a power play goal prior to the end of this game in the last 13 seconds? Well, here comes a chance for Connors. Connors with the shot. And I don't know if, uh, if Harnum got a piece of that or if it just went wide on its own. It's not getting put up onto the shot total, so I'll say it did go wide on its own. Shots in the third period, 6-0 for the Penguins. Overall, it ends up being 31-4. And the Penguins will come away with the 6-0 victory over the Cape Breton Lynx here for this one. That's going to do it for this game. We're going to be back with our next one coming up in just a few minutes. We'll have a flood, and then we'll get you the next game going. And it will be the Greenwood Capitals taking on the Eastern Stars. Until then, on behalf of my awesome cameraman, Stephen, this is Michael Petter saying, may your skates always be sharp, may your shots always hit the top shelf. Final score once again, it is the Lynx falling to the Actions Benefits Penguins by a score of 6-0. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back with you in just a few minutes.